Welcome back to the Gardening with Join Holly Radio Show. Happy you're with us today. Moments away, author Pam Farley. But first, but first, a message from Rise Garden. Rise Gardens is a revolutionary hydroponic gardening system for your home. Instead of food traveling hundreds or even over a thousand miles before it hits your plate, harvest the veggies, herbs, and greens you need for dinner tonight in the comfort of your home. No green thumb required. Knowledge. Gardening made easy with the Rise Gardens app. Step-by-step guidance from seed to harvest. A complete garden on a shelf and comes with everything you need to grow healthy and the freshest food for you and your loved ones. Fully customize your garden to your needs and preferences. For more information and to get your Rise Garden, visit risegardens.com. you got to check it out. It's really, really neat really how, nice. how this thing is, is put together and, and the technology. Technology is good and bad. The technology is good in this situation. So, Holly, let's go to the hotline and bring in our guest for this week. Pam Farley is also known as Brown Thumb Mama. She is a blogger, author, and small business owner. Her new book, The First Time Gardener Container Food Gardening, comes out uh, March 7th. Welcome to the program, Pam. Thanks for having me. Well, we thank you for taking time out of your day, not only educate Holly and myself, but all of our listeners. And I'll start with this. Obviously, in the garden, for many gardeners, we want to do things as natural as possible. What are some natural ways to eliminate those aphids, snails, and slugs that want to do damage to the plants we're trying to grow? These are some of the most common garden pests that I think everybody battles. And at least for my, when my grandpa was teaching me about gardening, he wanted to spray everything with chemicals because that was how things were done back in the day. Um, thankfully now there are a lot safer ways to keep the critters off your plants. And believe it or not, for aphids, your first line of defense is going to be to just wash them off with the hose. They're not very strong. And you can just get um, a spray nozzle on your hose and blast them off of your roses or your vegetable plants. Um, My kids get a kick out of buying ladybugs at our local garden center. Um, The ladybugs and ladybug larvae will eat the heck out of your aphids. You can also use insecticidal soap, which is different from doing dish soap or laundry soap. I, You see a lot of interesting suggestions on the internet and they're not always safe, but insecticidal soap, insecticidal soap suffocates the aphids and it is safe and non-toxic for the plants and for us when we're eating them. So those are, um, that's a great way to help fight aphids. And there are several great ways to fight snails and slugs too. One of the easiest things that you can do is to keep mulch and leaves away from the stems of plants. Uh, Snails and slugs like to hide under mulch and bark. Mulch is great for your garden because it conserves water, but you have to kind of balance that with if it becomes a snail, a snail and slug hideaway. Another thing that I have seen is um, I haven't used this myself, but some folks say if you lay a, a little piece of like a maybe a broken fence board or something on the soil in the garden, for some reason, the snails and slugs will like the shade underneath it. And you can go out there first thing in the morning, pick up the board and get rid of all the 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 yucky guys that way um scrape them off into the trash can or something another one that i just recently learned about at a um, at a business conference is wool pellets and these are little um they they look like mothballs but they're made from waste wool that normally would be thrown away and they, you know, they kind of smell a little bit sheepy, but you spread a layer of these wool pellets around your plant. The, the pellets expand a little bit when they get wet and they kind of turn into a carpet that the slugs and snails don't like the feel of. So they are keeping down weeds, conserving water and keeping the snails and slugs away at the same time. They're kind of like a, um, like the the best mulch ever, as long as you don't mind 
a little bit of an interesting smell. <laughs> That's definitely uh, very interesting. Never had heard of the wool pellets. Um, it was new for me too. I thought it was pretty neat. That is neat. So you are an advocate for natural living. What mm-hmm. What is natural living and what are some ways people could live more naturally themselves no matter where they live or maybe they don't even realize they're already living naturally? I think the the important part to me about what living naturally means is to tread carefully on the earth, um, pass up the if you're um, maybe if you're getting takeout and you're going to bring it home, don't take the plastic forks and use the silverware that you already have. It could be for some people, it's growing a couple of herbs on their windowsill. Uh, there's all there's all different ways to live more naturally. You don't have to be super extreme and you know stop buying makeup and get rid of all your fancy, you know, iPhones and things like that. It's just about taking good care of the earth. And um, a lot of times by extension, we end up taking better care of ourselves too, because we're eating healthier and being more mindful and things like that. Okay. So we are talking with Pam Farley, um, also known as Brown Thumb Mama, author, blogger, small business owner. So your book, The First Time Gardener, Container Food Gardening, comes out this Tuesday, March 7th. What is something mm-hmm. intriguing or helpful tip that would get our listeners, you know, they're interested, peaked to pick up a copy? I know that your readers are already interested in gardening and they, they are probably quite skilled gardeners themselves. Um, my book is, as the title says, The First Time Gardener. And so this book is great for those folks. I tried to include the questions that the other gardening books think that you know, but you might be too embarrassed to ask things like if I plant seeds, do they have a right side up? Um, (laughs) These are things that people have asked me, right? What does full sun mean? What if, what if it's sunny there all day, but then when the, the sun goes behind the neighbor's tree, it's shady for a half an hour. Does that still work? Or, what if I plant my plant in a container that's too small? Um, is it going to die? Like, th- there's nothing wrong with these questions. It's okay to ask, um, you know, questions that that more experienced gardeners might think, oh, well, that's silly. Everybody knows that, you know, full sun means six to eight hours of sun a day, and it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of shade. Blah, 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 blah. But this this book is for the beginningest beginner and it's very kind and welcoming and friendly. And there's no such thing as a question that's too basic. Well, and you bring that up <clears throat> and we were talking to one of our uh, close friends who works at a garden center and he's one of the high, higher people up there. And he was saying that he was talking to somebody in regards to kind of that level of, uh, of information. And he said, Oh, I don't want to say, I don't want to insult your intelligence. And she said, you're not because I don't know. And he, you know, he sat back and thought, we say these things and we don't say them because we think everybody knows them, but we say them and we're so in depth into the, you know, we're so far in the forest, we don't see the trees that we don't step back and go, there's people that don't know these questions or the, the answer to these questions. And it's okay to not know them. Right. I, I have a friend who's an excellent seamstress and I was telling her that I just can't get the hang of putting in a zipper. And she looked at me, you know, like I just stepped off of another planet and said, well, that's so easy. You know, you just have to. Right. And and then later on in the conversation, I said something about uh, making my own compost. And she said, oh, well, that that's got to be hard and messy. And I bet it attracts rats. And I said, actually, no, it's as easy as pie. And that that was an aha moment for me. Each of us has our our thing that we know a lot about it, and it's it's okay to not know something, and you should be brave and ask. It's okay. Right. Uh, You have a lot of natural home ideals on your website with a current shortage of uh, with a current shortage of disinformation. How do you kill? germs without bleach i think that's everybody has you know 
bleach is the go-to, is the you know the gospel of killing things. How do you do it without bleach? Because I know bleach is not a very nice chemical to use. It it is very strong, and for a lot of folks, it can you know becomes hard to breathe when you're cleaning the shower because it's just such a very very strong chemical. And believe it or not, there is a combin a more natural less abrasive combination that you can use and it is hydrogen peroxide and white vinegar and this was actually studied by a scientist at virginia tech and she was able to demonstrate the way that these two i guess chemicals work in concert so you would spray um put a spray spray top on both of them or pour them separately into separate spray bottles. You spray the vinegar onto the surface that you're disinfecting. So, you know, the kitchen counter, the bathroom and door handle, light switches, things like that. Leave it sit for a few minutes and then you spray the hydrogen peroxide on. You don't wipe it off. You just spray them on in order. And when you spray these on together, they form parasitic acid which fights against salmonella, E. coli, and listeria, which is, you know, those are our three germs that none of us want floating around our houses by any means. An important note that you don't want to use this combination if you have granite countertops or marble countertops or any kind of natural stone in your house or kitchen because the vinegar is acidic and it could damage the stone. Right, and sometimes, well, most of the time, when you use bleach, it's more harmful to you than what you're trying to clean. Probably. So, um, in in uh, what is the best way, uh, in, in extra, uh, what is the best practice for container gardening? Your book is about container gardening. What what do you see, or in the book, what do you find to be the biggest mistake, maybe that people aren't aware that they're making, but they're making, you're like, hey, you shouldn't do that. One of the things that I see so much on, you know, Pinterest and things get that get passed around Facebook and stuff is um, planting food in containers that are not food safe. Mm. For example, planting potatoes in a stack of old tires. Um, there are so many so i talk a lot of course about you know choosing the right container choosing the right picking the best size of container making sure they have drainage of course but food safe containers are really important because i mean you're growing food in them so you don't want any kind of mysterious chemicals leaching out from the container into your food um that means planting potatoes in a stack of tires is right out because heaven knows you wouldn't eat your dinner off of a tire. So please don't, please don't grow food in something you wouldn't eat off of. If you, some folks will find, um, Oh, a pretty, a pretty old bucket or something at the thrift store or the flea market. And, and they want to plant in it, but they don't know, what, you know, if it's really old, it might have lead paint, things like that. In that case, what you can do is use a, a food safe pot on the inside, like a nursery pot or something like that, and use your pretty container on the outside. It's called a cash pot when you have, when you have a pot inside a pot. And, and you, you can see those a lot of times, um, at the, at different, big planters and things will have several small pots inside of them. So I, I think that is the, the biggest concern that I see. And, you know, you can't correct everybody on the internet, but gosh, don't, don't eat out of something. Don't grow food in something you wouldn't eat off of. It's just not safe. Right. So for those of us who do go thrifting and to the flea market, do you know if there's a way maybe not necessarily for like a container, but say I found these ladles at the flea market, these vintage ladles, and I'm like, is this lead paint? Should we use this? I don't know. Do you know if there's a way to tell if it would have That lead is paint? a great question. There, I believe that there are home lead test kits. 
I have not used them myself, but I did read that, um, like I had some vintage Pyrex from my parents' house that I wanted to donate, but I had read that that vintage Pyrex from the late sixties, early seventies, probably not safe to eat out of anymore. So I, I chose to, to not donate those because I didn't want to pass them on to someone. So I'm, I would imagine that, that there are probably online somewhere. Well, or it, there are test kits. If they weren't safe to eat now, they probably weren't safe to eat in the 70s. We, you just didn't <laughs> exactly, know about it. Yeah, yeah which explains <laughs> a lot about us 70s kids, right? <laughs> yeah, but, uh, well, Pam, we greatly appreciate the time you've offered Holly and myself and all of our listeners. How can we find out more about you, your website? Where can we get the book when it drops here on March 7th? Uh, uh, what, what can you tell us? Thank you so much. So my website is Brown Thumb Mama. So B R O W N T H U M B M A M A, and I am on all the socials with Brown Thumb Mama as well. And my book will—it's already available online and all the usual, um, all the usual places. So Amazon, Books a Million, um trying to remember all of the Amazon, Barnes and Noble books, depository books, a million and indie bound. And if the, if you buy it through my website, brownthemama.com slash shop as a special thank you for your listeners, they can enter in their email address and their order number down at the bottom of the page. And they'll get a free bonus chapter. That's not in the book all about making your own compost wonderful well pam thank you very much for the time you've offered us and uh, we've enjoyed the conversation likewise thanks for having me absolutely for more information please visit the wisconsin vegetable